Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Rye, Team Flex. Um, we're talking today about something that has been going on, you know, for a very long time in the sport of bodybuilding, but recently has, you know, somewhat become more pronounced. And a lot of people have been asking me questions regarding what is going on in the sport of bodybuilding. Why does it seem that, you know, this year specifically, there's so many more competitors that are unfortunately passing away, you know, either close to competition, um, you know, maybe they're just bodybuilding competitors that are well known that are unfortunately passing away all of a sudden. I mean, there's a lot going on this year, you guys, and people have been asking me, what's my opinion? What's causing it? You know, is this a new thing? Has this been going on? And I got a lot of information to give you guys here. So that's what I want to talk about today. Um, and definitely a video worth watching. You know, if you're a competitor, if you want to compete, no matter who you are out there, this will be a beneficial thing to watch. Okay, so you guys do me a quick favor, though. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Really trying to bump this channel up, really grow it, you guys. And if you hit the like button for me, that helps a ton. Okay, it helps me get up on this algorithm. You know, I'm putting a lot of effort and time into this content for you guys. And uh, we really want to grow this channel because it's going to help more people, the more people that see it. All right. So if you do that for me, I appreciate it, you guys. So let's talk for a minute about what's been going on in the landscape of bodybuilding this year. If you guys pay attention to any, you know, of the kind of quote unquote bodybuilding media outlets, you've probably seen, uh, you know, the many times this year that have been posted where, oh, there's been another competitor that, uh, you know, passed away. There's been another bodybuilder that, you know, passed away. There's been another person that unfortunately has now died. And everybody's kind of sitting there like, what? How is that even possible? How did that happen? I mean, you know, we were just talking to somebody yesterday and now all of a sudden, you know, I mean, it's crazy to think if you follow any of these people, you guys, you can literally still watch their stories, uh, you know, at the time they're being announced to have passed away because they were just literally on Instagram, you know, living their life, doing their normal thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're unfortunately dying. And so people have been wondering what's going on with this. Why is this happening specifically with, you know, what seems to be competitors, what seems to be bodybuilders, both male and female people that are active in the sport that are, you know, competing maybe even at a beginner level, but also people that are world renowned athletes that are big names in the sport of bodybuilding. And we've seen this going on a lot this year, but I want to tell you guys something. This is not anything new you guys I mean yes we have seen an influx this year it seems but that's really has a lot more to do with the media attention that is now on the sport right I mean you think back years ago uh, there was not this level of media support in the sport of bodybuilding meaning like social media Instagram YouTube this there's now you know dozens and dozens of places that you can get regular updates on what is going on in the bodybuilding world, who's competing where, what shows are going on, who placed, who won. I mean, we never had that stuff before, you guys. You think back, you know, what seems like only just a few years back, uh, you know, it you only really found out who was doing well at shows and whatever when they were posted in a magazine, you guys. That's literally where the sport used to be. And I mean, you talk about way back golden era days with Arnold or in the 90s, you know, some of that era where, you know, this was, you almost didn't even know who was competing until, you know, months later when they got posted in the magazines. I mean, it was crazy. And a lot of the bodybuilders that were competing back then didn't even know who they'd be competing against. And now, you know, with social media, with, uh, you know, the ability to literally see people's entire journeys 24-7, that gives us now the ability to see, okay, well, everybody is always got eyes on these competitors, always got eyes on those call-outs, always got eyes on those shows, and now when somebody passes away, somebody dies, boom, you are first to know, you know, we're breaking the story kind of thing. It's almost like, you know, a lot of these media outlets are doing this, uh, you know, in some ways like news networks, right? It's almost like bodybuilding news. And so you find out about things very quickly. It gets a lot of shares. It gets a lot of comments. It gets a lot of people wondering what happened, you know, and then, you know, obviously anybody that ever knew any of these athletes, all of that are, you know, going to give their condolences and share and post and comment and do all of those things as you should. And so that all comes together to say, all right, there's a lot more eyes on what's going on. And it 
it makes people, you know, freak out in some ways, wondering what is really going on in the sport. Something's going wrong. Something's not being done correctly. And here's what I want to tell you guys, okay? None of this is new. Unfortunately, competitors have been, you know, passing away from circumstances in bodybuilding for since probably the start of the sport, you guys. And there's a number of reasons for that. And I mean, yeah, it obviously has escalated over the years compared to potentially before when you didn't have as many coaches and things like that. But now, like think of a, a bodybuilder, think of somebody that does anything with the sport of bodybuilding that does not announce in their bio on Instagram, they're doing coaching, right? They're dropping meal plans, they're sending people, you know, performance enhancing drug protocols and doing all these other things that are just absolutely insane. But I mean, the influx of now bad coaches can be a huge, huge contributing factor here. Bad practices in general regarding bodybuilding now and, you know, the extremes that it has got to in some ways that it takes now to compete at those levels and methods people will use to try to get there. You know, training rigorously, very, very hard, never giving the body a break, taking performance enhancing drugs, doing certain types of very restrictive diets, trying to maintain unhealthy levels of body fat. I mean, there's so many things that come into play, you guys, when we talk about this. This has been going on forever. I can tell you guys from my personal experience, you know, I've seen, um, you guys have heard me talk about peak week a lot, right? Talked about peak week a lot on this channel, dispel, dispelled a lot of those myths and kind of broke those down for you guys and really tried to talk about, hey, peak week, the way that it's being done, you know, in a lot of coaching methods for a very long time is very detrimental to your health, very, uh, you know, potentially risky practices. They could actually land you in the hospital or you could actually die. These things are not jokes you guys. It does happen. Uh, there's been many, many competitors that die in peak week. It happens often and it happens most of the time due to, you know, poor coaching practices, use of diuretics, use of other elements to try to dry the body out, dehydrate, get leaner in combination with all kinds of other manipulated variables and things that just lead to a perfect storm for very problematic system in your body with your organs and everything else. And, you know, sometimes they shut down. I'll tell you guys the truth, you know, from my coaching career alone in the time that I've been doing this sport and I've been a coach, um, I've been to many, many competitions, you guys, many, many, many competitions. And I have been backstage, you know, with athletes that I'm prepping for the shows and, you know, we're doing pump up or whatever. And, uh, bikini competitor pass out fall on the ground get you know rushed out in an ambulance i've seen bodybuilders pass out on stage when they're doing their routines i've seen many times you know competitors actually have to be it rushed out of the event in an ambulance because of something they did. They were so dehydrated. They took some kind of, you know, substance their coach told them to take. They're doing shots of salt or, you know, vodka backstage in combination with being dehydrated. All kinds of crazy things go on, you guys, in this sport. And, you know, it's it's very unfortunate that so many people can suffer through these things. And obviously very, very, very unfortunate that people could potentially be passing away from certain types of coaching practices or things that they're doing to compete in the sport. And um, I've seen that time and time again. I'll also tell you guys this, you know, uh, there's been people that have considered joining Team Flex, considered working with me that I've been in talking to, you know, I, I, I've talked to on Instagram or I met at a competition and they had questions and they wanted to know things. And, uh, you know, obviously, guys, we don't coach using any of that kind of stuff. No diuretics, no performance enhancing drugs. We're not doing compounds or any of this other stuff that is very prevalent, very common, but also comes with these side effects and the potential for serious issues, you know, organ failures and liver problems and kidney failures and potential even death. If It's not it's not crazy to even say that. And it's crazy because it feels crazy every time I say it, but it's not crazy because it happens all the time. But, it, you know, we don't do any of that stuff. And so when it comes down to that, you know, sometimes I get that question when I'm talking to somebody and they're like, yeah, well, what's your protocols like? What do, what do you suggest? What what things would you have me taking? Blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I tell them that. And some people think, you know, that's a deal breaker then. If you're not going to prescribe them drugs and you're not going to try to, you know, tell them what to do with steroids and everything else, or you're not doing diuretics, you're not going to dry out enough for show, blah, blah, blah. And I've seen those competitors, some of those same people I've kept in touch with, 
you know, actually have died. And I actually knew them. You know, I've had ex-clients that actually left the team before because they decided, you know, they didn't want to do it naturally anymore. They didn't want to do it a certain natural way. They wanted to actually go try to take cycle and do all these different things. And I don't do that. So they quit the team and then they've died going to other coaching methods, you guys. And so this is, uh, you know, uh, very close to my heart in a lot of ways. You know, it's, it's very... Um, confusing in a lot of ways, very interesting to see that, you know, you could have had clients that you did know, people you did know that actually went on and did other things besides what, you know, you would assume is the right way, the natural way, like I believe, and uh, they died from it, you guys, it's crazy, and so, you know, here's the thing that I also want to say about this, you can't always say 100% circumstantially that it has anything to do specifically with performance enhancing drugs, specifically with other compounds, specifically with that, a lot of times there's other things at play, you guys, um, in combination with those things that cause it, so, you know, also, here's the fact, nobody's ever going to be diving into this research really looking at this. You know, this is not going to be something that's researched, considering that taking steroids and performance enhancing drugs is an illegal practice. Um, you know, it, it's never going to be something that people are going to look at and study and try to figure out if in combination with this, if you take steroids, if this happens, how does, you know, that's never going to be studied. That's never going to be looked at on that scale because it is an illegal substance you are not supposed to be taking. And hence why when coaches, you know, promote it, coaches push it, coaches are telling you to do it. They're essentially in a lot of ways, you know, pretending to be doctors. They're trying to play this game of telling you what you should and shouldn't be taking. You know, it's not a good practice. And most of the time they're regurgitating information they heard, things they read things they may have got from another coach, but it's never going to be doctor level medical advice, which is what these substances are used for. You guys outside of the space of bodybuilding, I mean, they're going to be used in a medical setting and prescribed by an actual doctor. Okay. And that's how it should be. So I just want to say that, you know, there's so many things that come into play with this. You guys, there is a, a, a number of different practices that could be causing people to have problem. I mean, just from the standpoint of bodybuilding alone, right? If you think about the fact that bodybuilders now, okay, and when I say bodybuilders, by the way, guys, I'm talking about every division, not just men's open bodybuilder or anything like that, women's divisions, bikini, wellness, all these things. The quality of competitors now has got so advanced, you know, the criteria has got so advanced what it takes to be competitive really does require you to, you know, live a lifestyle. And we know this, you know, we, we talk about the lifestyle on Team Flex all the time that you got to fit the criteria, uh, you know, to your life. You want to compete in a category, in other words, where, you know, you realize you're still training in the off season, you're still making those improvements, you're still doing all those things that you have to do to be, you know, the best on stage. But when you get to the point where you're doing that the wrong way, that means you're always pushing your body way too hard, way too long, you guys, right? There's like, you know, a lot of studies on even marathon runners, you know, the marathon runners you would think would have some of the best cardiovascular health in the world, right? Since they're always training the cardiovascular system, always running, always doing these different, you know, drills to keep their body in shape, to be able to run marathons better. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, guys, I ain't jumping up and running a marathon, and I don't think you probably are either. You got to train for it. So it means it's something beyond the scope of what your body can really do just out of, you know, nowhere. But here's the thing, you know, a lot of, a lot of marathon runners have some of the worst cardiovascular health. Some of them drop dead in their mid forties because, you know, they had a heart attack or something like that. And there's been a lot of studies on that and what it causes. And, you know, a lot of times it comes down to the fact that maybe organs in our body, such as our heart, things like that only have a certain amount of beats they can, they can beat before, you know, they start wearing out. It's kind of like you think about your car, right? If you're driving your car 24 seven and you're never, you know, doing the these things to maintain it, to keep it on, uh, you know, rehab and fix it and make sure it's doing all the right things. That's your body too, you guys. That's your body too. If you drove your car 24 uh, seven, we would all assume that car's going to break down eventually. And even if you maintained that car, even if you tried to do your best every day to keep that car in tip top shape, if you're still driving it 24 seven, it's going to eventually wear out. And we would look at a car and say, no shit, it's an old car. It's going to wear out. That's what happens. But when we talk about people, when we talk about the things they do to compete in their sports, uh, it becomes to the point where you might be always pushing that envelope so much that maybe you just pushed your systems beyond what they could do. And obviously when we get into the realm of performance enhancing drugs and what they can do for you guys, you know, as far as muscle growth and things like that,
like that. Yes, that's that's the main reason people take it in the sport, right? They want to build muscle faster. They want to build muscle beyond what they could build naturally. They want to build muscle in a superhuman kind of level, but also, guess what? Other organs in your body, you guys, your heart, you know, your your livers, your kidneys, all of these things. This all really does hypertrophy with it. You're going to get to the point where you can't isolate, you know, when you're taking these performance enhancing drugs, when you're taking growth hormone, when you're taking all these things, you can't isolate what is growing at that time. You can't isolate, oh, I just want to peak my biceps more. I want to glow, uh, grow my glutes more. I want to grow my quads more. So I'm going to take steroids to do it. No, every single thing in your body starts to grow. And when you really put that level of stress then on all those organs, you put that on there. I mean, you've already now going to in some way have affected the ability for them to function. And so there's no question, you guys, that, uh, you know, I do think in the sport of bodybuilding related to the deaths that have happened for a long time, it does come down to a lot of what is done as far as practices go with use of performance enhancing drugs, with use of peak week protocols, with use of diuretics, with use of bad coaching methods, with use of, you know, obviously also we have to talk about athletes pushing themselves too hard, too long, all the time, never pulling back, never finding that rest, never taking time to maintain the engine, if you will. And uh, that really all combined will lead to the perfect storm, which does unfortunately land a lot of people in bad places, bad spots. And like I said, you guys, I know from my personal experience, people that I know, I've seen backstage pass out, I've seen people be rushed off, I know people that have died, I know many people that have died, even very recently, as far as many of the recent deaths. And uh, I, I got to tell you guys, it's truth, you know, the, it seems the sport of bodybuilding building in a lot of ways has got far away from the actual principles that bodybuilding was supposed to be about. Uh, you know, bodybuilding, when it started, you guys, it was always about, you know, being physically your strongest, being physically your best, being your healthiest, building muscle because it was healthy for you, lifting weights because it was healthy for you, you know, getting yourself into a spot where you were doing these things to improve your life and function better and live longer. I mean, that's really where it started, even from the beginning with Eugene Sandow, who was, you know, quoted as the first bodybuilder back in the circus days, you guys, and it kind of grew for years and years along that, and when you get to the sport level of top level competitors of bodybuilding, obviously that's always going to be the extreme, the top athletes in any sport, you know, are always pushing the envelope of health or not, I mean, really a lot of times when you get to the top level of any sport, you're no longer considered always going to be in that healthiest realm, you're always going to be pushing your body too hard, doing too much, that's really with every sport, but especially in bodybuilding, but I mean, now that we're seeing this kind of stuff trickle down to the amateur levels, even the first timers, you know, these people in their early 20s that are passing away from things they're doing, it's just crazy, and you know, it seems to me that the sport of bodybuilding in a lot of ways has got off track from the actual health and the realization that, you know, you should be always doing this to improve your life, and you know, a lot of the people in the sport that are the top people will talk about that, you guys, I know a lot of the top judges in the sport and they talk about this at their seminars they talk about hey make sure bodybuilding you know the sport you're competing in whether it's bikini it's wellness it's figure it's men's physique it's open bodybuilding whatever part of this sport it is you're using it to enhance your life it is part of your life it should not be your entire life you should still be able to you know enjoy time with your friends enjoy time with your family have a life outside of the sport be able to build a career do all these things and it seems that when a lot of people get into the spot where they're doing too much they're doing it too long they get to the point in their mind where they'll do any extreme as long as that's what it takes. That's a very dangerous spot to be. And that's how a lot of people unfortunately end up in these places. And so I think you guys, uh, you know, over time, this is going to continue to expand. Like I said, you know, the reason that it seems to be popping up so much right now and why I'm getting so many questions about it. Uh, nothing's really all that different, in my opinion, from what's been going on for years and years. It's just now a lot more eyes on it. And so that does do a a lot of good things because maybe it makes more people that are getting into the sport question, you know, when they have a coach trying to push whatever kind of protocol on them. It makes people getting in the sport question, you know, is the things they're about to do the healthiest things they could be doing? It makes people question, you know, are they going to potentially end up in one of those spots where they're pushing it too far, doing too much and risking their health or their life? It's going to bring a lot more attention to everything and overall that's going to be good for every individual person. Obviously, it's it's never a good thing for the sport of bodybuilding if we have, you know, big names in the sport, unfortunately, dropping dead, passing away for 
for causes that, you know, really we'll never honestly know. I mean, most of the time what it's going to come back at is you guys is some type of organ failure, whether it's, you know, going to be some type of organ that failed and, you know, that's what caused it, or it's going to be, you know, a heart issue. Heart attack is something you'll hear or see a lot. And that has a lot to do with the hypertrophy that happens to the heart too. We're taking performance enhancing drugs. I mean, there's so many things to go, you guys, but I want to know what you think. Um, what do you guys think the direction of the sport of bodybuilding is going now? Do you think anything's going to change? There's been a lot of question of if, any of the criteria will change based on this. And I would tell you guys, I don't really think so. I think that, uh, you know, what needs to change at a level is athletes need to be better educated. They need to know what they're doing to their bodies. They need to know, you know, before they do anything, what it could potentially do to their bodies. And they need to also, we need to level up on coaching. You guys, we need to have coaches that actually have basic anatomical knowledge of things, at least, right? We have so many coaches just declaring their coaches, but they have no credentials to do so. They have no ideas and they definitely should not be pre prescribing, you know, doctor, medical level grade drugs that you could only get from doctors and have these coaches playing doctor when they don't know anything about, you know, a person's health. So, I mean, I think we need to level up a few things. We need to level up the education of athletes and make sure they know what they're doing and they know all these things and they're not just blindly taking something from someone because they said to or their friend did or whatever. And then also we need to take coaches and help them, you know, actually get educated and help them understand what they're doing, help them understand understand the risks and what they're actually doing to people you guys so you know at the end of the day that's my opinion on it i want to hear what your guys opinion is please drop it in the comments below and make sure you subscribe guys we got a good a lot of great content coming up on this channel and it's only going to get better from here all right so thank you guys appreciate it talk to you later coach rye is out